Hi, I'm George Kirby. I'd like to welcome you to the third in this series of Jiu-Jitsu videotapes. You should have reasonably good proficiency in the skills presented in my first two tapes, taking you to green belt with the yellow stripe, to be successful with the techniques presented in this third tape. This third tape will cover the skills necessary to reach the rank of purple belt or fourth Q. At this intermediate level, you will round out your study of the basic throws, nerve techniques, and takedowns of the art. You will also learn additional self-defense skills necessary to deal with more aggressive attacks, including knife and club attacks. You will have to spend about 25 to 50 hours practicing these techniques to become proficient enough to move on to the next level. As you practice these techniques, please be aware of the following. One, use adequate mats of sufficient workout area to practice in. Two, practice the technique slowly. Speed will come naturally with time. Three, be considerate of your partner. Don't be abusive. Hari Goshi, outside sweeping hip throw. hit, bring his arm across, set a Udegruma, also known as Udegarame, submission, come in for your sweep, kick straight back, Shiro, rear arm lock takedown. Juji cross block, left hand grabs his wrist so that you can bend it as you strike his upper arm. As you bring him down, make sure that his upper arm is against your chest. Pull his forearm towards you for the submission. Turn, turn to your left, turn your left for submission. Tomonagi, stomach throw. Execute the stomach throw by placing your foot in his stomach, not his groin, just below his belt level. Submission is a shoku waza, kubi shoku waza. The 
right thumb is pressing down either into the hypoglossal nerve or one of the other nerves in his neck as your left hand pulls up on his left <laughs> Tainaki, basic hand throw, another variation, out of the way. in the previous hand throw. Notice, however, this time I'm using my forearm to put pressure on the back of his hand. My left thumb is between the second and third knuckle. There's a nerve there. Putting the forearm on top of my thumb creates a lot more pressure going to Tekumi Shimiwaza wrist press, Tekumi Shioku Waza. remove the weapon from the person's hand. Iainagi, wrist side throw, also called a Tekubi Yokonagi. your wrist, turn one out, going down into Bude Guruma, you're lifting his arm up towards his head from the back of his hand, turn your one hand out, raise that whole arm up, your left hand will support it very easily underneath. <laughs> Shironagi, leg lift, rear throw. Side step out to the left, execute a circular block reaching towards his face. This will execute the throw. Kata Uranagi or Hikiyokonagi reverse form throw. Attack grabs your wrist, grab the other shoulder, pull him around. Your left arm slips under his neck, set Ude Gruma with your leg, and lean back to execute the submission. Floating arm throw.
also known as a uki otoshi, or floating throw. This is a floating throw. This is an easy throw to do. You basically have to have confidence in yourself that you can do this. Yoko Makikomi, basic winding throw. Lock the club, wind over it, lean forward like you're going to fall flat on your face, except turn to your left. Set the shoulder lock, Ude Guruma. Get him tight against you. Lean on his upper arm, pull his lower forearm towards you. <coughs> Makikomi, body winding throw. Makikomi is almost identical to the prior techniques of going around his head. It is very important for the uki to ki eye, otherwise the air will get knocked out of him anyway. As you bring him down into the headlock, be sure to put his arm above him so that he can't use it and it increases the lock. Ubi Nagi Makikomi, winding thumb throw. You grab his thumbs, turn his hands off, locking his arms, reach up and away to break both of his thumbs. Ten, three. Honey Goshi, inner sweeping hip throw.
sidestep in, you want three point contact, the ankle, knee, and hip. Sweep him up. Set a Budigruma shoulder lock with a choke again. This is the previous technique. Shimiwaza, nerve attack, armbar takedown. His hand away, strike to the back of the kneecap, bring him down. In practice, be careful so that he does not land on his elbow. It's important that turning the hand this way does lock the wrist, although it does not appear that it would do so, and it is very painful. You need is a slight tap behind the right kneecap to balance him. Juji Makikomi, cross choke winding throw. set this technique up, reach as high as you can with your left hand and pull with your right hand. There's no need to push with your left hand. <laughs> Pulling with your right hand will set the choke. Uki Otoshi with a figure four armbar, drop throw. Technique, be sure to kick up with your right foot and let the rest of your body follow. Again, this is a technique. The ukiyotoshi is one that is one more of confidence in yourself rather than being a difficult technique. Once you get it, you'll be surprised at how easy it is to do. We're finishing up again with another figure four armbar. <laughs> Yukimi, soft form. Notice how the right hand is still leading and it is palm down. This is very important because it lines up your entire body to take the fall with the minimal chance of injury. Thank you. 
Kimi. Kimi, hard fall. That's why it is important to break the fall with your arm so that it will absorb most of the shock of the landing. Also notice that we always get up into a ready position or tachi waza. <coughs> this break fall is called a ipon. Fist is formed into a gingutsu, and the fall is done balancing on the wrist momentarily. Double ipon or nippon. Notice how. lands on their shoulders and their feet and their arms rather than the bottom of their back. Ushiro Yukimi backfall. Dive, another Mayukimi. Start learning this actually from a kneeling position. Be sure to keep your chin up, hit down hard with your legs and your arms, and be sure to kiai.
This freestyle kata demonstration is used to illustrate how you might practice some of the jujitsu techniques you have learned. In fact, there may even be some techniques in here that have not been shown thus far. The attacker is allowed to attack however he wishes, and the idea is for you to use whatever techniques you have learned. This helps develop the concept of mushin, or reacting to attacks, without thinking, because that is the only way they are going to be effective for you on the street. You can start this out fairly slowly, and as you gain more experience with it, you will find that you can execute techniques fairly quickly and effortlessly without any apparent strain on your part. Always be sure that your attacker or your uki is aware of the techniques that you might be using. This will help him avoid injury. find that if you practice freestyle kata after you've had a good workout and are fairly tired, that you'll probably do exceptionally well. The reason being is that you are going to have to depend on ki and mushin to execute techniques. You may also find it worthwhile to play back uh, this portion of the tape a little slower on slow motion because there probably are some techniques in here that are not shown in the instructional sequences that have preceded this freestyle demonstration.
find that if you execute your techniques smoothly and effortlessly, rather than trying to execute them quickly, that they will be far more effective. And that, again, is one of the purposes of engaging in freestyle practice. You'll also find that practicing freestyle kata allows you to develop complete jiu-jitsu techniques. Techniques that involve a loosening up, such as this knee strike, the technique itself, shoulder lock takedown, and the submission. This is an important part of becoming an effective jiu-jitsu student and practitioner. I hope that you enjoyed this third tape. You don't have to be perfect with these techniques to move on to the next tape. However, I'm sure that your proficiency is improving dramatically at this point. Be sure to keep your speed slow and movement smooth. That's what's important as you reach this level of proficiency. To further increase your proficiency, you should start doing two additional things now. One, start practicing the techniques left-handed. This will develop flexibility. Two, start using the techniques for different attacks and in different combinations. I hope that you're enjoying your growth in the art. I also hope that you're getting some of the Japanese terminology down too. We'll really start putting it all together in the next tape. Until then, good luck.